Hey guys, I'm Clint Pascal, lead pastor of The Waters Church. The Waters Church, what is The Waters Church? Guys, we're a church where you don't have to hide your tattoos, where the pastors aren't that impressed with themselves, and where you don't have to pretend to be better than you really are. So here you are, you're checking out one of our messages. Guys, these messages are based on biblical truth. Don't ever take any of our word for it. Do your own stuff. Do your own testing. This is biblical stuff and truth that will lead your heart to freedom. And our goal here is always the same, just to push people a little closer and closer to Jesus Christ. And man, the closer you get to him, the more free your heart's going to be. Hey, thanks so much for checking us out. So a word to all of us, we're all invited to something today. Normally we have House of Prayer at four o'clock, which by the way, House of Prayer is just like taking on a whole new beautiful momentum. Hope to see you guys back at House of Prayer next week. But today at four o'clock, we are hosting in this room from four to five thirty a youth camp testimony event. Now we don't take a service on a Sunday morning for this. We want to dedicate an entire time just to this thing. So it's tonight. Everybody's invited. Uh, It'd be a wonderful thing for people to come check out if you want to kind of get to know the flavor of how we do youth ministry. But most importantly, we're going to celebrate how God has moved in the hearts and lives of our youth and our youth leaders. That's in this room in just a few hours at four o'clock to 530. And then after, we're all going to go to El Jarrito restaurant down on Mason Road. Have you been to El Jarrito? It's fantastic. It's down on Mason Road, and I've worked out a little deal. Carmen, a lady that works there, is a friend of mine. Uh, they're giving us a 15% off discount. You just have to bring a little church bulletin. So take it. We'll have them before you this afternoon. But if you, let, let's say that you're like, you know what? I'm not interested in the teenagers. I don't even like teenagers. I don't even want to go to that thing. Yet. But hey, I like Mexican food. Come join us. Uh, we'll leave here around 530. I know it's a gift that keeps on giving. So we're going to leave here around 530. We'll venture down there. I don't, I don't have an exact time, when, but we'll leave here at 530. We'll get down there probably around 545. Love to see you guys there. That's today today. Just a few hours. You excited? Yes. So teenagers, we look forward to celebrating you. Youth leaders, we look forward to celebrating you. Please show up this afternoon and know there's not child care. My kids will be here and they'll be running around crazy. It's just the way it is. All right. So I'm pumped about that. And teenagers and youth leaders, you're just just solid gold. We love you guys so, so much. Let me pray for what it is that we're about to do. Father, I'm so excited, a little nervous, I hope that I do a good job at uh, the responsibility that I have in the next few minutes to express to our church this message about our discipleship plan. Father, I pray for all of us that we will get this general sense of momentum of all these beautiful things that you have been doing right under the surface uh, and swirling all all sorts of energy uh, since our church was founded in 2003 to this very, very important part in our church's history. I'm excited, Lord. I pray that you speak the message through me. Don't let me get in your way. I'm just pumped about what you have for me to talk about. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Today, my goal is to express to you all of the energy and truth behind the grow part of Gather grow, go. The concept of our discipleship path is simple. We want to introduce and lead our church through a holistic concept of what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. It has so many different moving parts to that, and we have captured those parts in three phases, gather, grow, go. Last week, um, Man, Kristen King, what can I say about her? She, she presented gather, grow. I mean, she presented the gather part last week. We, she had Ted and Shannon up here that just killed it. So that was a fantastic thing. Celebrating the concepts of the importance of us gathering together. We gather big, we gather small, we gather with, I was just wondering how many people are listening, intention. Everybody say intention. We gather big, we gather small, we gather with intention. Today we are talking about growing, the importance of growing. And to get a flavor and a sense of the importance of this, I want you to be inspired by Wayne Cordero. He's the pastor of New Hope Church in Honolulu. I'm sure some of you just visited that church uh, last week or so. But Honolulu's got a fantastic fellowship. Wayne is a, an amazing leader who travels all over the world. He recently went to China to train some leaders that are in China that are sort of an underground concept of a church. Um, out of the 22 people that were at this training, 18 of them had recently been imprisoned for their faith. He got to the end of this amazing thing, and then he had some people in this training time ask him a question. He now 
sort of characterizes that question and his answer. Y'all be inspired by Wayne. Well, after three days, you fall in love with these people. And when it was done, I, I said, how can I pray for you? I'm going to go back to America. And you guys have been just so wonderful. How can I pray for you? They said, you know, Wayne, you guys can gather like this whenever you want to in America. We can't. Could you pray that one day we'll be just like you? And I looked at him and I said, I will not do that. Big, incredulous eyes looked at me and they said, well, why? <laughs> I said, because you guys rode a train for 13 hours to get here. In my country, if you've got to drive more than an hour, people don't come. You sat on a wooden floor for three days. In my country, if people have to sit more than 40 minutes, they leave. You sat not only here for three days on a hard wooden floor, but you did it without air conditioning. In my country, if it's not padded pews and air conditioning, people don't often come back. In my country, we have an average of two Bibles per family. We don't read any of them. You hardly have any Bibles and you memorize them from pieces of paper. I will not pray that we become like uh, you become like us, but I will pray that we become just like you. Yeah, it's often been said that Christians worldwide need to send uh, teams to America on mission trips to teach us what it actually means to be a disciple. I appreciate Wayne, and I appreciate him answering the question, no, I won't pray that. So we together need to ask ourselves a question, how do, how do Christians like this worldwide work? How does it work like this for them? Because these people work so hard considering their spiritual growth, their responsibility, their passion for God's word to the point that pieces of paper are smuggled in, they memorize it, and then they throw it away. And in the process, memorize much of the Bible. This is what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, to have a thirst, to lean into hardcore the concept of following closely behind our rabbi, Jesus Christ, to the point that we are covered by his dust. Gather, grow, go. Don't you love this logo? I appreciate our team working so hard on this. The concept behind gather, grow, go is to answer the question, what does it look like to be a disciple of Jesus? And this will lead us into the concepts of discipleship at the Waters Church. The GROW concept focuses on those core spiritual disciplines that you've heard about for the last two weeks. First, they were mentioned by Angela and last week by Kristen. Let's walk through these core spiritual disciplines. Now, these we've gathered from the book called Move. Hawkins and Parkinson are fantastic researchers in the Willow Creek Association. And they've really boiled down what it means to have spiritual disciplines into six things. Number one, understanding how to approach and read your Bible. Number two, listening to and responding to the Holy Spirit. Number three, feeling comfortable praying and understanding how to pray better. Four, a willingness to be held accountable by your spiritual community. Five, seeing the church as something that you own and that owns you. And then six, serving the Lord through missional living. Okay, that sixth one up there is the concept of the go portion of Gather, Grow, Go. The idea of living missionally, it brings with it evangelism. It brings with it the concept of reaching out, reaching in. So the grow concept, the go portion is number six. The grow concept is the first five. It is the idea of understanding our Bible. It is the concept of connecting with your Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, third person of the Trinity, ready to lead and guide you. It is the idea of being accustomed to prayer and letting prayer be something that is natural outflow of your connection to the Lord and prayer just is something that you just live. It is the idea of celebrating true community and accountable to that community, not just coming in last one to get here, first one to leave, but actually having a concept of community and then church involvement. This is a pathway to spiritual growth. It's a pathway to health. So the idea of grow, well, there's many verses in the Bible that talk about growing, but as, as, as opposed to just using a word to define itself, Romans 15, 4 has some serious power to it, and it really captures the concept of a growing Christian. <laughs> Look at this verse. Everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that the three words, endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. The concept of our Bible has been presented to us so that through endurance, 
Do y'all have any places in your life right now that you're living where you could use more endurance? Raise your hand. You have something in your life going on where you're like, I could use endurance. And then what about encouragement? Do you have an area in your life where you could really use some encouragement? How do you know when someone needs to be encouraged if their heart is beating? And then hope. All of this provides us with hope. Hope that leans into the future without anxiety, but hope that leans into the future with confidence. A growing Christian has these happening in his or her heart. Endurance, encouragement, hope. A really good example of this is my mother. In uh, December 26 of 2014, my dad died. My mom's best friend in the world. And I've asked my mom repeatedly through my journey with her, through her grief, and clearly she's still grieving today, Mom, how has this been like for you? And she constantly says this. She, can't, she simply says over and over, the only thing that gets me through this is the Bible. Because she prayed many prayers that dad would be healed and dad died of cancer. A weird form of lung cancer too. Never smoked or anything. So mom, how do you get through this concept and cling to your faith after losing your best friend? The Bible. What is she saying with this statement? She's saying that God's word has power in it to transform. Amen? It has power in it to transform. From what? From vulnerability to durability. Do you feel vulnerable today? From vulnerability to durability. It's transformative power in it. And obviously, we know why. Because it is God's words, his expressions, his speaking to us. Her faith has grown. Her knowledge of God's word has grown. Her community around her has grown. Her prayer ability, her desire to pray has grown. Her dependence on the Holy Spirit has grown. Her church life has grown. All because of what? Because she went through this awful circumstance, this trial of life, and the Lord said, hey, Judy, now let's work on some things about you in this process. This trial is not to be wasted, but this trial is kingdom of God investment into your life. And so my mom is a living testimony of what it means to own her own spiritual growth and own it like it's nourishment. So the Bible talks a lot about food, food, and it compares itself to food. Job said something interesting. He said, my feet have closely followed his steps and I've kept to his way without turning aside. I have not departed from the commands of his lips, I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my daily bread. Whew, I like bread. Bread is good. I like cutting it thin, soaking it in an egg and a little bit of cinnamon and nutmeg, making French toast. Mm. And the Bible says it is just like food. It will nourish you. And man, a real clear example is Hebrews chapter 5. The truths of Jesus may be hard for you to follow since you've become dull in your understanding. By this time, you ought to be teachers yourselves. Yet I feel like you want me to reteach you the most basic things that God wants you to know. It's almost like you're a baby again, nursing, not ready for solid food. No one who lives on milk alone can know the ins and outs of what it means to be righteous and pursue justice. That's because he's only a baby. But solid food is for those who have come of age. For those who have learned through practice to distinguish good from evil. Have you ever almost fainted because you weren't nourished and didn't have enough calories? The Bible talks about the importance of us consuming God's word as if it was food. So consider this. Donald, would you come and help me, please? Stand up to your feet. Come over here, tiny. And... Donald, I want you to do something for me here. The Bible talks a lot about food. I'm going to have you hold this. Just hold this right in front of us. Right here. Turn around and face everybody so everybody can see this. Hold it up a little bit. Let's see what we have here. Is that steam coming off? What do you see there? Tilt a little bit. Not too much so everybody can see. What is that? Steak. Yeah. Don, take a walk. Just walk around the room so maybe this smell can... Uh, Oh, gosh. Wow, mission accomplished. <laughs> that smells really good. Yeah, that was a little torturous. Oh, I told you that I shouldn't take a bite because I'd start salivating, but it's happening already. <laughs> the Bible and food. The Bible and food. Go all the way around there, Donald. Come back up here. Just hope. Did you, you smell it? I hope that you smelled it. The Bible compares its nourishment to food. But here's what we oftentimes do with the food of God's word. 
The food of God's word can sometimes be misused by us. So don't stand right back here for me. Consider how the Bible talks about itself as food. It is nourishment to your spiritual health. Now, a lot of times, here's how people, here's how people treat the truths of this. They go over to this and go, man, this meaty goodness, the beauty of following Jesus, man, I am ready, God. Oh, that was the best steak I've ever had. Oh, the juices are flowing, and I can feel that taste. Oh, thank you for that experience. Now I go about my day, and I'm strenuously working. I've got physical activity, and in about two hours, I'm starting to feel kind of faint. I'm like, what happened? I don't know why I'm feeling so faint. I consumed that steak. No, you didn't. You just licked it. Enough of this. Why don't you turn that back to here? Michael, would you do me a favor and cut that into small bites? In just a minute, by the way, that steak has been finished with garlic butter. So for any of you who have a problem with butter... But in a minute, I'm going to ask for hands to be raised, and I do need volunteers to come take your bite. I did assign this. Just hold on, Drew. I see that hand. The buses will wait. Um, I, I, put, I gave this assignment several weeks ago to Michael Wisniewski, and, and let me just say that Michael Wisniewski is known for his steaks, all right? He cooks them very right and very well. He's been cooking in the back alley uh, just for this moment. So he's cutting them up into little bite-sized portions, and in a moment, I'm going to sh have a show of hands. Um, and then I'd like you to come up and I'd like you to stand up in front of us and consume this steak, all right? The problem with our experience with Christ is, or with discipleship is sometimes that the Christian life is something that we just barely get a taste of. We just get a little bit of taste and then we feel spiritually faint later because we actually didn't consume all that it's there for us to grow. <sighs> Do you feel spiritually faint this morning? This is a question I need you to consider. Do you feel spiritually faint like you don't feel like you are ready to endure this life in front of you because you are so tried and so pulled and so challenged that in some places in your journey, you are very ready to give up. That's just like life. Life around you has metaphors everywhere. And one of the metaphors is absolute basic physical hunger. And what do you need? You need food. A Ritz cracker would be okay, but a steak, something about a steak. We need to eat. We want to consume and feast together. The Christian life is not something that you're supposed to just give a nice little lick on, just a little taste on, just a little essence of. If you come to church once a week and this is your spiritual food, then that is like licking the steak and you are probably very hungry. But what we really want to do as a church is feast together. It's not so much my job as a leader to feed you. As we saw in the Bible, it is your spiritual journey yourself to own. And so we want to do, as leaders of the Waters Church, in the grow concept of our discipleship strategy, is create opportunities for people to sit down and feast together on the Christian life. That includes Bible, that includes prayer, that includes the concepts of community and being held accountable that includes your involvement in church being very thick and you being very ready to lean in and volunteer. So, I don't know how many bites do we have. How many do we have, Michael? Um, just come, set, come up here, Donald. You can be one of them. We have forks ready. We have forks right here. So if you'd like to come and consume this uh, illustration, uh, first come, first serve. <laughs> I want us to look at what's happening. So people are rushing to the stage during one of my messages. I want, I want us to always remember the magic of the moment. <laughs> Thank you for that. It's exquisite with a hint of garlic. We have more bites. Some of, them are gonna get, some of these are going to get... Yeah, I was wondering why you, of all the carnivores in the room, why Tanya was not moving. Tanya, in our marriage, she always makes fun of me. Always makes fun of me because of the way that I eat. She's like, I'm the carnivore and you're the one that always wants a salad. I know some of you are like, oh, I can't go to this church now. I can't, I can't be here. Well, if nothing else, be inspired by Tanya. Oh, she's going to take the whole plate. 
We got about six more. If you want, I'm not, we're not going on until this plate's empty. This is a test of your desire to be fed. That's how this works. It's that second wave of, of <laughs> desire. It's like at an invitation when I say, you haven't missed your moment, we'll wait. Donald, you can go sit down and fit. No, 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 you can finish those, Donald. You did a very good job. Round of applause to our chef. Thank you, Michael Wisniewski. That worked out so much better than I thought it would, and here's why. When, when we are considering the ideas of eating and feasting together, it is something that brings people joy. And there are some of you in this room right now with regret. I see it in your face. Like, there's cuss words that are coming to your brain right now, like, why didn't I move? Such an idiot. Tanya, was it good? Yeah, I still don't understand that. <laughs> Tanya believes that when God said, well done, my good and faithful servant, that was God's answer to how do you want it cooked? Some of y'all are going to laugh at that later, like even more later. That's a good one. Uh, groaner. The Christian life is not to just get a simple taste. The Christian life is something that we want to consume together. It actually provides nourishment. My sermons are great. Great. My sermons are great. They're just wonderful and great. But my sermons are designed to rally Christians together around the call for discipleship. My sermons are meant to rally people together and get excited about Jesus Christ and introduce somebody who might not know him to him. Because Jesus Christ is what everyone wants. And everybody is looking for what Jesus provides. So my sermons are designed to get your attention about the beauty of the grace of Christ and to rally Christians. But guys, they are not the type of solid food that you get when you own your own spiritual journey. And that is the concept of grow. You cannot grow as a physical human being unless you are absolutely eating on a daily basis. So speaking from the leadership at the Waters Church, we are excited to be able to introduce to you the concept of grow groups. Our church started in 2003, and we started with a bit of an interesting strategy. We said we don't want to do the classic Sunday school concept, which provides classes that are specific to age, or then you get to be an adult, and then that's just your class, and you are just in that class forever, and you might transition when you get to another age bracket. We decided we wanted to do something different, create more of an organic sort of type of learning environment. We started out with life seminars. Life seminars was the answer to how do we want to do Bible study. And life seminars was great for a season. And then our church transitioned in this beautiful program called Waters University. And Waters University captured the concept of classes that were short, not short, I mean, they were eight to 10 weeks, but these classes where people gathered together, they learned about one another, they grew in community, and they, did, they understood the concepts of God's word. And all of these things that we've been doing have been the sweeping momentum to lead and build us up to this moment right now. As these two opportunities of Bible study have been happening, there's also been this incredible undercurrent of support and care called life groups. Life groups is that classic answer. How do we want to do life together as a church? We'll do it through life groups. Life groups, life seminars, Waters University has all been, been working on this moment together where our church leans into the future and establishes this streamlined, desired approach to discipleship in grow groups. We've met with all of our life group leaders and everybody, all of them are excited We've, we've talked to so many teachers. We've got so many different people that have been under the surface that have been meetings and gathering and ready for the launch of Grow Groups. So Grow Groups will officially start in this church on September the 8th. Uh, incidentally, by the way, that day, Flood, our youth uh, worship band, will be leading worship from this stage on Sunday morning, uh, September the 8th. They will blow your mind. But uh, that's a side note. We're supposed to be excited about Grow Groups right now, but I'm really excited about Flood. 
So I want us to watch this video that was uh, presented by Kristen King and by Maddie Zaretic, our Grow Group Director, as we understand how Grow Groups work. We'll watch this video together, and then we will talk about uh, what next steps are, and then we will respond to a time of response today. And I'm excited to introduce to you Grow Groups. Let's watch. Kristen, what are Grow Groups? As the Waters Church introduces our discipleship strategy, Gather, Grow, Go, Grow Groups are the primary place in which we are inviting each and every person to own his or her growth in Christ. Grow Groups are curriculum and teaching, teaching driven groups in which the primary focus is on people studying and being challenged by God's Word. Grow Groups are a place for people to be fed and to learn to feed themselves. How will Grow Groups work? Fall 2019 Grow Groups will start the week of September 8th and will run for a 12-week period. Groups will finish the week before Thanksgiving, allowing for a natural break through Thanksgiving and Christmas before spring Grow Groups begin after the new year. Each session of Grow Groups will begin with registration, so you have the opportunity to select a new time, location, and teacher each semester. There will be groups that meet at the church, before and during our Sunday morning services, on Wednesday evenings at the church, and throughout the week in homes of our members. All groups will operate with similar structure, and every group has the same goal, to work towards the development of five key spiritual disciplines through investing time in God's Word. Those spiritual disciplines are understanding how to approach and read our Bibles, listening and responding to the Holy Spirit, feeling comfortable learning how to pray and understanding how to pray better, willingness to be held accountable by our spiritual community, and learning to see the church as something we own and feed, not just something that feeds us. Maddie, is there a cost for Grow Groups? No. Maddie, what if I have kids? Our goal is for Grow Groups to be accessible to as many as possible. While not every group will work, we certainly have groups that will have child care. We have groups on Sunday mornings available with child care as well as Wednesday nights. And more than half of our at-home groups will offer child care during the study time. What will we study? There is nothing more important than the foundation of who we are in Christ and the riches of our salvation. We find it imperative that we are offering every person who walks in our door the opportunity to learn the fundamentals of Christianity. In our original plan for Grow Groups, we envisioned that we would have different curriculums in each group, with all groups looking to focus on the Word of God and the development of these five key spiritual disciplines. As we were praying through the first round of Grow Groups, God began to lead us toward the beauty of a church-wide study of the fundamentals. We began to envision the excitement of an entire church body, including our youth ministry, studying the fundamentals of our faith at one time. For this first round of Grow Groups in the fall, we as a church body will be led through an incredible curriculum written by our own Angela McClinton that provides foundational knowledge and depth to the core elements of Christianity. This curriculum covers the gospel, the Bible, prayer, the Holy Spirit, the church, accountability, and the calling of the Christian. In future sessions of Grow Groups, different groups will look at different types of curriculum, continuing to focus on the truth of the Word of God. For the fall 2019 Grow Groups, every group, including our H2O Sunday morning class, will go through the fundamentals of Christianity. How do I register for Grow Groups? You can register for Grow Groups in the lobby starting Sunday, August 4th through the 25th. You can also register on our website at IamTheWaters.com slash grow. At The Waters Church, we have no greater joy than to move closer and closer to Jesus as individuals and as a church body. As we gather, grow, and go, let's fill up these Grow Groups and see how we are transformed by the Word of God. We're pretty excited. So the idea of grow groups, 
It is um, something that is new for our church, but it is something we've been doing for a long, long time together. It's our desire to get them streamlined and answer your questions. When you leave today, each of you will get one of these handouts. It's a uh, Grow Group's uh, Frequently Asked Questions handout, and these will be given to you as you leave. Uh, the groups are going to be offered all different times. I'm looking forward to a Wednesday night experience up here where groups will be meeting in simultaneous times with our youth ministry is meeting and Grow Groups all over the place uh, in homes on Sunday morning. So Grow Groups is our, des- our way as a church leadership team to set the table. And then our joy is for you to sit down and feast. We will feast together. And you know what it's like when you have a meal together. When you have a meal together, it's just wonderful. People get to know each other. People's uh, relationships get stronger. Um, It's one of the reasons why after doing today, I said, let's all go eat at the Mexican restaurant together. It's just something about eating together. God's word is our nourishment. And the Christian life is not something to just be tasted, but it's something to be feasted on. Uh, And it's our desire as we've set the table for you to sit down. Kristen King, our, dis- our discipleship pastor, this is exactly why I wanted her on my team. And I'll close with this. Kristen has challenged me over the last, uh, ever since she's been with us a couple of years. Over the last few years, as anybody in our church has shown any sort of interest in getting involved, it is always Kristen that provides this challenge to any of us, but specifically to me. If I'm talking about somebody I'm getting to know in the church, she always encourages me and reminds me of something very important. Get to know first their journey with Christ. So we might have somebody who is like so good at playing the drums or amazing at keyboard or fantastic at leading in children's ministry or gifted in youth ministry or adult education. And you bring these beautiful talents to the table and we're excited to see how God will use you. But there's nothing more important than us getting to know you in your journey with Jesus. All different types of places on our journey, and none of us are at the same place. But we can make a decision to grow together, to eat together, to feast. No one's excluded from the table. Everyone is welcome. It doesn't matter your choices that you've made in your life, the mistakes that you've made. It doesn't matter a label that you place on yourself. No one is excluded from the grace of Jesus Christ. Everyone is welcome to sit down and feast. Are you hungry today? If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, Jesus wants to give you his life. If you're a Christian and you've been a Christian for a long time and you're hungry, you might need more spiritual nourishment. That's why we're here. And that's why you've got that amazing Bible. We provide this time in the service as a response time to go pray and be prayed for. We have prayer team members at the back. People are ready to look you in the eyes, ask how you're doing, and pray over you. For anyone in the crowd who's never been saved, today could be a beautiful day where you say, I want to be saved. I want God's forgiveness over my life. I'm hungry. God. Today could be the day that you are prayed over. All your sins are completely wiped out. And a new kingdom of God label is applied tattooed to your soul. Forgiven and innocent forever. Doesn't that sound good? This is our time of response. I'm going to pray over us. And when I say amen, we will all rise to our feet as you are standing up walk to the back of the room to be prayed for. We have people ready for you. If you are hungry, go to where the food is. And we are ready to talk to you about Jesus and pray his truth over your soul. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the truths of the Bible. I thank you for how nourishing it is to be a simple of yours. And I pray right now, Father, in Jesus' name, through the power of your Holy Spirit, that you would sweep across our church through a spirit of continued revival and an embracing of discipleship. God, thank you for grow groups and everything that has built us up to this point. We're excited to see how you will move, but right now is this moment that we have. 
So may all of us feast on the Christian life today. May we feast on our Bibles today. May we feast on the concepts of prayer and community and vulnerability today so that we can then be durable together in Jesus' name. Amen. Please stand up to your feet at this point. If you want to be pray and be prayed for, now is the time. Go. Walk to the back of the room. Do not talk yourself out of a moment like this. You might not get another one. We are here for you right now. Let's feast together.